if you're anything like me, you are just coming off of a very exciting nine days of swimming fandom where you got to totally geek out and watch the Olympics in Paris unfold and be one of the best swim meets of all time and have that completely dominate basically everything else that's going on in your life and certainly everything that's going on within the realm of swimming. So you haven't thought about anything else, or maybe you have, and I'm the minority, but the Olympics and now the post-Olympic coverage for me as someone who works for Swim Swam has been all I've been doing and all I've been thinking about since July 27th. So when I looked at Swim Swam today, and saw the news about Notre Dame men's swimming being suspended for one academic year because of an investigation into potential gambling, I was shocked. This didn't come completely out of nowhere, but it was a big surprise to see today. We had reported on this before, so let's just break this whole thing down. So if we go back to just after the Olympic trials in late June, Swim Swim did report that Notre Dame had announced that they had hired an outside firm, an independent law firm, Ropes and Gray LLP, to do an investigation into what they were calling uh, team potential issues with team culture. Um, the sources were telling Swim Swim that this investigation had been ongoing since January of 2024. So ultimately today we found out that what this investigation brought to light is that there is a there's gambling happening on the notre dame men's swimming and diving team pat 40 um, of sports illustrated also put out an article around the time of this press release um, and he cites multiple sources there so according to sources from pat 40 and from swim swam um, there was a sports book. Um, there were over under lines set for multiple swimming competitions, which is pretty strictly prohibited in the NCAA. Uh, it, it says that they would set lines for how people would do during the swimming races, and they would go all the way to how many women would cry after certain races. So from what we're hearing and what we've reported so far, there's a pretty wide range of what was actually getting bet on, but most of it was occurring at swim meets. There was also gambling was happening with other sports. Um, the only specific one that they noted was the NCAA men's basketball tournament. So the specific rule that outlines no betting for college student athletes is rule 10.3, I'm just going to read it. The following individuals shall not knowingly participate in sports wagering activities or provide information to individuals involved in or associated with any type of sports wagering activities concerning intercollegiate, amateur, or professional athletics competition. A. Staff members of an institution's athletics department. B. Non-athletics department staff members who have responsibilities within or over the athletics department. Um, a chancellor or a president, a faculty, athletics representative, individual with whom athletics report, stuff like that. C, staff members of a conference office, and D, student athletes. So this is a particular surprise because the Notre Dame men's swimming is coming off of the best year in and out of the NCAA that they have ever had. They just finished second at the ACC Conference Championships, the highest in program history. They went on to the NCAA Championships and finished 10th, once again, the highest in program history. Then they had their first swimmer make the Olympic team ever in Chris Giuliano, and he made it in three individual events, the 50, the 100, and the 200 freestyle. No American has swam all three of those events at an Olympics since 1988 when Matt Biondi did it. Chris Giuliano walked away from the Paris Olympics with a gold and a silver medal. 
the overall the Notre Dame men were looking fantastic in terms of swimming. So when we initially reported that there was going to be an investigation uh, into the team for team culture happenings, it was pretty surprising because Chris Lindauer, who is now just finished his second year as head coach of Notre Dame, seemed to be doing a very good job in terms of getting quality swimming results. Now, Notre Dame was a program that was plagued with culture issues before Chris Lindauer had come in. And so they have a history of the teams not really gelling and the coaches being a cause of that problem. But it says, according once again, according to sources uh, from both Swim Swim and Sports Illustrated, that Chris Lindauer and his staff were completely unaware of this betting. Uh, so whatever gambling was happening, um, allegedly the coaches did not know that it was happening. Uh, it, it was also cited that Chris Giuliano, the guy who went to the Olympics for Notre Dame, was not involved in this betting. And by association, this also means that the women's team for Notre Dame, they, they're not getting suspended. They're not getting punished. Guess they didn't. I guess they weren't involved with this betting either. That's uh the the context for which this is all happening we don't know a whole lot we know we know the information we got from the press release and we know what sources have told us which is a little bit more information than the press release but let's just talk about speculation into what the athletes will do now i'm guessing a lot of them will just stay for a year um I'm guess, I guess it's an option to just train with the team. There's a lot of uncertainty because this punishment is coming from Notre Dame itself, but they could still instill more disciplinary action um, to individual student athletes or to the team as a whole, as could the NCAA. So we don't know in what capacity the athletes are able to maneuver around, AKA, if people want to transfer out of Notre Dame because they want to compete this year, if they are a current student athlete, they might stay and train at Notre Dame. Um, they might quit swimming and say, you know what, I'm just going to be a student at Notre Dame. But for seniors, um, so actually, and this is the last year that the COVID fifth years would would have the option to have that fifth year. This could be their last year. This could be their last shot at having an NCAAs. Um, that includes Chris Giuliano, who, who is a rising senior on the Notre Dame men's team. So that's a big one for him, and he's coming off the best season of his life. But what do they do? Do they transfer to another school? Because we don't even know if they will be eligible to transfer and compete at another school this late in the season. Um, there is you, an NCAA waiver, if there's a coaching change, sometimes students are able to transfer in late notice. Um, but normally, you have to enter the transfer portal in the spring and transfer in the spring to be able to compete in, in the next NCAA season. If you do it this late, normally, uh, you can't compete in this upcoming season, which would be the 24-25 season. So there's a lot of and then you have the incoming freshmen who, again, could, m might just choose Notre Dame and stay and stick it out a year and see if the program is reinstilled or, um, <clears throat> or unsuspended in a year's time, which isn't a guarantee. Or you could go to a different school, but again, we don't know if they'd be eligible to compete this year. So you could always redshirt and just train at your home club team. But again, it is so late in the game, I'm guessing a lot of college students have already either moved moved into the dorms, and especially if you're a student athlete, maybe started training with the team, or they're getting ready to, right? They're saying their goodbyes. Uh, they're, they're like, see you, mom and dad. I'm ready to live on my own for once. And now that might not be the case for them. So it's a it's a really tough situation for those student athletes who 
are being affected by this, especially if they didn't participate in that. So, so that's kind of the outlook and, and options that some of the student athletes might have in terms of what they're going to do. Um, but we don't know that yet. That's mostly speculation. These rules are in place for a reason. And I, I was one of those who at first thought, well, I mean, why can't they gamble? Why is this a big problem? Um, why does this warrant a one-year team suspension? But as the rule outlines, it becomes very problematic if you are betting on the sport you're participating in. And I think that's mainly what the rule is targeting. But let me know what you think in the comments. I, I, I think this is a fairly nuanced situation, especially as the NCAA is moving towards student and student athletes specifically becoming employees of a university. Uh, so the NCAA is in a really interesting place right now. Um, and I think there's a lot of opinions to be had about this situation. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments about it. I, I Let's keep it civil, but I really would like to hear what people have to say about this because it's a surprise and it's something we don't see every day. So I'm sure there are a lot of aspects to it and probably aspects I didn't cover or I'm not thinking of or that I don't even know to bring up. So let's hear what you have to say. That's, that, that's my rundown of this situation, of this pretty shocking situation, but I'm sure there will be updates and uh, more information that comes to light as we move forward with this and we will be sure to keep you posted on all of them. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.